Today we have yet another interesting log trig integral. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of log x times the inverse tangent of x divided by x. And there are a couple of ways to approach this. One is using integration by parts. And if we start off with integration by parts, then the solution is pretty smooth because we have a nice antiderivative for a log x divided by x. It's just the squared logarithm of x divided by 2, right? And later, we're going to have to invoke an infinite series expansion. So the other approach is to just invoke a series expansion from the word go. And you might be thinking, okay, that sounds cool, but what exactly are we going to expand in terms of an infinite series? I mean, there's the logarithm of x, and there's the inverse tangent of x, and there's the reciprocal of x. Well, it turns out the inverse tangent function has a pretty neat infinite series expansion that can be extracted out of the geometric series. So what I'm saying is that if I write the reciprocal of 1 plus x squared as the sum over k, the non-negative integers, of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2 times k, which is valid for the absolute value of x being less than 1, which of course holds on our interval of integration, and if I just integrate this, then on the left-hand side, I have the inverse tangent of x. And on the right, I have the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1. So for reference purposes, we're going to call our integral here i. And invoking our series expansion, we can write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of log x divided by x times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 integration with respect to x. And because this log x by x term is independent of the k variable with respect to which we're performing the summation, we can just slip it inside the summation operator and write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times log x times x to the 2k plus 1 Divided by x means you have a negative 1 here as well, so you're left with x to the 2k, and you're dividing all of this stuff by 2k plus 1, integration with respect to x. And now the golden question is, can we or can we not switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators? Well, here's a graph of the original integrand, that is log x times inverse tangent of x divided by x, on our interval of integration. And we see that the integral from 0 to 1 converges because the area is bounded. So that means, yes, we can perform the switch up of the summation and the integration operators because the integral in question converges. So we can write this as the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to 1 of negative 1 to the k times log x times x to the 2k divided by 2k plus 1 integration with respect to x. and because this negative 1 to the k term, as well as this 2k plus 1 in the denominator, these two are independent of the x variable with respect to which we're integrating, we can just slip them outside the integration operator and write this as the sum over k of negative 1 to the k, oh, terribly sorry about that, negative 1 to the k divided by 2k plus 1 times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 2k times log x dx. And all this integral needs here is some integration by parts. So we're going to differentiate the logarithm boy and integrate the x to the 2k term. So we have 1 by x and x to the 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 after just one integration and differentiation. So we can write this as i being equal to the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by 2k plus 1 times the... Um, x to the 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 times log x minus the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 times this 1 by x term. So once again, you have x to the 2k in the numerator. And this term here, oh, I forgot the limits. The limits are 0 and 1. And this term here evaluates out to 0, pretty easy to verify. And you're left with the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by 2k plus 1 times the negative of 1 by 2k plus 1. And if you integrate this, you get, a, you get an x to the 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 again, with the limits being 0 and 1. 
and in the limit as x approaches 1, you get a 1 in the numerator, and for the 0 limit, you get a 0. So all of this implies that i here equals the negative of the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k divided by 2k plus 1 cubed. And to evaluate this infinite series, we're going to need some Fourier analysis. Now the plan here is to invoke a half-range Fourier sine series for this function f of x defined as x times pi minus x on the interval from 0 to pi. And because we're looking for a Fourier sine series, that means we can expand f of x as the sum over the positive integers k of b sub k times sine of k pi x divided by the interval length l, which in this case is of course pi. So divide by pi and you're just left with sine kx and all that's left is to figure out these Fourier coefficients b sub k, which are pretty straightforward. b sub k is defined as two divided by the interval length, which in this case is pi, times the integral from zero to pi of f of x defined as x times pi minus x times this very sine term. So we have sine kx and just a bit of expansion here for the integrand gives us 2 divided by pi times the integral from 0 to pi of x uh, times pi times sine kx minus x squared times sine kx dx. And using the linearity of the integration operator, we can write this as 2 divided by pi times pi times the integral from 0 to pi of x times sine kx dx minus um, the integral from 0 to pi of x squared times sine kx dx. So we have a couple of really simple integrals here, and both of them just need some integration by parts. So let's start off with this boy here, the integral from 0 to pi of x times sine kx dx, where we integrate the sine term and differentiate the x term, of course. So you have negative x times cosine kx divided by k, limits being 0 and pi, minus, and two negatives give you a positive, 1 by k, integral from 0 to pi of x times, oh, sorry, differentiating that gives you a 1, and we have cosine kx dx. And this here evaluates to a sine kx by k, right? So we have sine kx by k with the limits being 0 and pi, and sine of k times pi, where k is some non-negative integer, just gives you a 0, and sine of 0 is 0 as well. So this entire thing collapses to 0, and in the limit as x approaches pi, you have negative pi times the cosine of k times pi divided by k, and as x approaches 0, this term here approaches 0, so the entire thing collapses. And the cosine of k times pi is, of course, negative 1 to the k, where I've included k equals 0. And there's no harm in including k equals 0 because this was a Fourier sine expansion and the sine of 0 is 0. So if you just include the k equals 0 term, you're just adding a 0, which is, again, harmless. So you have negative 1 to the k divided by k. And that's the story for this integral here and for the other one. The one involving square, we have the integral from 0 to pi of x squared times sine kx dx. And this just needs a couple of integration by parts. So we have x squared negative x squared times cosine kx divided by k uh, plus sine again, 1 by k, integral from 0 to pi. And differentiate the x squared term, you get a 2x. So let me just replace the numerator here with a 2. And we have x times the cosine of kx dx, and this requires another integration by parts. And, oh, I forgot the limits here. Again, in the limit as x approaches pi, you have a negative pi squared term here, negative 1 to the k term here, divided by k, plus 2 divided by k times x times sine kx by k, limits 0 and pi. And because of these limits, you get a big fat 0 again minus uh, the integral from 0 to pi of the cosine, no, it, it's now the sine, it's the sine of kx dx times 1, which is just sine x. Anyway, so we have to integrate this. That gives us a 
something I'm forgetting. It gives us something I'm forgetting. This was a 2 by K. K. Yeah, that thing had a 1 by K as well. Let me just rewind this a bit. I had an uh, 1 by K integral 0 to pi sine Kx. Much better, much better. So this gives me a cosine Kx. I'm really sorry. I'm, uh, I'm sick. I caught the flu. So this is a lot harder today. Uh, limits 0 and pi. And this means that I have negative pi squared times negative 1 to the k divided by k uh, minus 2 divided by k and we have k cubed that is and the cosine k times pi is again negative 1 to the k and cosine of 0 is just 1, right? So that's the evaluation of the second integral, and now it's time to just piece everything together. So I have the results of the integrations written out in front of me, and it turns out I've caught a missing negative sign. So over here, I integrated a sign term, which gave me an extra negative sign that cancelled out this one. So I have positive signs carrying forward all the way up to here. Okay, cool. And notice that this integral is being multiplied by pi. So I have pi squared times all this stuff. And this negative sign means I have a positive sign here and a negative sign here. So these two cancel out pretty nicely. And this implies that I can write b sub k as 2 divided by pi times uh, all of this. So that's a negative 4 in the numerator, and in the denominator I have pi times k cubed times negative 1 to the k minus 1. And for even multiples of k, for even values of k, I have 1 minus 1, which is 0. So that means the only values of k that interest us are values of k of the form of 2 n plus 1. That is the odd values, where n runs over the set of the non-negative integers. So this implies we can write the Fourier coefficients now as b sub n being equal to negative 4 divided by pi times 2n plus 1 cubed times minus 1 minus 1, which gives negative 2. So you have an 8 up here in the numerator. And now that we have our Fourier coefficients, we can write f of x, which was in fact x times pi minus x, in terms of its Fourier sine series expansion, and that works out to the sum over the non-negative integers n of 8 divided by pi times 2n plus 1 cubed times the sine of 2n plus 1 times x. And to evaluate our required infinite series, all we have to do is let x here equal pi by 2. So this implies that on the left-hand side, we have pi by 2 times pi minus pi by 2 is again pi by 2. And on the right, we have the sum over n of 8 divided by pi times the sine of 2n plus 1 times pi by 2. So here we have all the odd multiples of pi by 2 as the argument of the sine function. So what you're going to get here is a negative 1 to the n term. Yes, it's going to be a negative 1 to the n. So this implies that we have pi squared by 4 equal to 8 divided by pi times the sum over the non-negative integers n of negative 1 to the n divided by 2n plus 1 cubed, which is, of course, the required series. And this, in fact, is the Dirichlet beta function evaluated at s equals 3. So this implies that beta 3 equals pi squared times pi by 8 gives us pi cubed by 32. And the integral was in fact the negative of this infinite series expansion. So we have negative pi cubed by 32 as our final answer. And that was pretty cool. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.